Um, how many of you get kind of burned out and feel like, I could say the F word, I mean, I'm really tempted to say the F word, but I did allow them to record me, so it is being recorded. Um, so I'm going to refrain from doing that, but, um, fuck, I mean, it's really, um, <laughs> it's really tough to stay in this fight, you know? Um, I would like to tell you that I have all the answers and that the science has finally come to full maturity and we're ready to just take on the world and prove everybody that has said all these negative things about us wrong. Um, and we're getting there. I mean, I, I'm really, I have a lot of hope and a lot of enthusiasm because as I kind of prepared this talk and looked at it, you know what? The literature is coming to us. The things that we've been saying for the last 10, 15, even 20 years. I think back to some of the stuff that Rimland wrote 25, 30 years ago. And you know what? It's coming. It's coming. But we, you know, we said gut bugs 15 years ago. And everybody thought, you guys are just completely whacked out. Gut bugs are causing autism? Have you seen any of the literature? I'm going to show you some of it. But yeah, those bad things that live downstairs in these kids make them crazy. How many of you believe that? Yeah, how many of you live that? I mean, you know, so goes the kid's yeast level, so goes mom's level of sanity that day. You know, pretty much. It's here now, okay? I mean, great papers from major universities starting to support us. This afternoon, I'll be in a think tank with some of those researchers working on the GI stuff. Yesterday, I was in a think tank working on seizure disorders. You know what? People are comfortable with the idea that oxidative stress and inflammation in the brain is a foundation of autism now. Researchers from Harvard and, and Baylor and, and all over are starting to say, yeah, we get that. Ten years ago, when we started to propose that idea that oxidative stress and inflammation in the brain was a big deal for these kids, and that's maybe the, the connection with vaccines and some of these other things that are going on, perhaps that's related with the, the gluten and casein story, they now accept it. So the revolution, which is really a grassroots revolution driven by moms and dads, let's face it, medicine didn't come to us and say, how do we solve your problems, right? They didn't say, oh, wow, there's an epidemic of autism. We need to help you with this. Did you get that reaction from anybody? <laughs> I didn't get that reaction. I'm a doctor. I didn't get that reaction. I know my wife got it from me, but, you know, after I was already in the fight. If I didn't have a kid with autism, I wouldn't be standing up here, I guarantee you. I'd probably be, it's, let's see, a weekend, a holiday weekend. I'd be sailing. That's what I would be doing. <laughs> so thank you all for being here. Um, there have been some remarkable changes, and I want to go through some of them. I'm giving a little time for some extra people to filter in if you haven't figured that out yet. Um, now, I did your note-taking for you and published it. You can have this free. This article, which is a complete review of what we're doing and where the world is going with biomarkers, and we could even add a few more since we published this, but um, this is available. Just email me. You got the email address right there? drbradstreetal.com. Um, I've done this at several conferences. I get a few hundred emails after the conference, and I answer them all. It's fine. Don't feel bad about it. Bug me until you get the article from us. It's um, about 170 references to the medical literature, and we talk pragmatically about the laboratory data that can substantiate what's wrong with your child and then what you can do about it. Seems reasonable, doesn't it? Now, I can't give you 170 references in an hour lecture but this will do it for you. And you can give it to your pediatrician or your gastroenterologist or anybody because it's laid out systematically. I'm not gonna go through the lecture about biomarkers. I wanna do everybody else's science, not talk about our stuff so much. Um, I wanna, before I get started really into this, I wanna thank some folks. Um, pay attention to who the sponsors are that are helping to pay for this, whether it's you know, OxyHealth or uh, Integrative uh, Therapeutic Clinics or some of the other sponsors. We have some great laboratories here. I couldn't do the research that I do and come up with these biomarkers with out labs like Laboratory Philippe Auguste and Doctors Data and Genova, Great Plains and the other laboratories that give us the really solid data. Really good stuff to help identify how to treat your kid objectively. So thank you all for that. Now, in medicine, normally what happens is we get this idea from the clinic and doctors and patients kind of bump up against each other and say, okay, so what's wrong and where do you hurt and what's the symptom? And we start working through and trying to help that. We then get to kind of some case reports where we say, hey, look, somebody had such and such and I did this and it worked. Um, then we get into case series and then um, non-controlled observations which get published and then controlled studies which get published and then we get to textbooks. That's kind of how it works. And then about 10 years after the textbook gets published, things start to change. So that puts us on track for about 2020. 
in terms of this really changing within the heart of medicine. This is the first textbook that really addresses the core biology of autism, and it's called Autism, Oxidative Stress, Inflammation, and Immune Abnormalities, and it's right on. It's right on. Um, now, it's a textbook for doctors. It's very technical. If you want to spend a couple hundred bucks and buy it, you can, um, but it's, it's for medicine. It's for researchers. It's for academia, but it's amazing to see it. We actually have that substantiation now. So, um, talking in the lounge yesterday after a bottle of wine and a couple of shots of vodka, I got the idea, hey, it's stress relieving, right? It's appropriate, it's medicinal. Um, I got the idea that I really needed to have an opportunity to set the record straight about some, a few things. So I've published the paper. If I do nothing else with this talk, read the paper and listen to what I'm about to say, because it's really important. You've probably heard it said that vaccines have nothing to do with autism, whether it's, you know, Good Morning America, whomever else, uh, the American Academy of Pediatrics, your pediatrician. How many of you heard that vaccines have nothing to do with autism? How many of you heard it at least 10 times? Okay, yeah. Um, now, I have a special place in, in my heart for those people, um, um, including the special master who uh, took an opportunity to completely blast me. I have never been so abused by a federal official in my life, and there's been a few that have really tried, but oh my God, I mean, they were just mean, just mean. I don't know if you've read or heard about the special master case involving uh, a good little kid, Colton Snyder, who's a sweetheart of a guy, who's completely recovered. And all they did, they spent about half of the whole um, discourse saying how bad it was that I took care of this kid and got him better, and how wrong it was, because there was no evidence that he needed any of that treatment whatsoever. And they actually said, he probably would have just gotten better on his own. About, let's see, a half hour a week of occupational therapy and one hour a week of speech therapy was all he really needed, according to the special master, to get better. That will work, won't it? I mean, how many of you think that's gonna cure autism? It's shocking to me, okay? So we have that kind of political legal environment that we live in, and yet, you know what? There's a lot of stuff out there on vaccines. I'm gonna go over a few things just to kind of stir the pot a little bit. Um, the reason for that, I mean, I wasn't going to talk about vaccines at all. And uh, about, was it last week that the American Academy of Pediatrics says the more vaccines you get, the higher your IQ is? <laughs> it, you didn't see that article? It was published in the American Academy of Pediatrics. The more vaccines you get, the higher your IQ is. You know, those kinds of data happen when you do what to the data? When you, when you lie. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate that. <laughs> it's better coming from him than from me. Um, no, that's when you overly manipulate the statistics, you get that kind of nonsense to come out. It's craziness. Um, I don't believe that for a minute. I don't think that all vaccines are bad, nor do I think that all autism is caused by vaccines. But there are clearly some cases in my practice where there's no doubt